I want you to ask a couple of questions for me. Do you need your refrigerator to send you that reminder that those concert tickets are about to go on sale today? Do you need it to play your Apple Music playlist, your morning vibe playlist to, as you're getting your breakfast ready? Do you need it to tell you that that $7 carton of egg is about to expire in the next couple of days? All of these features come in things called like smart refrigerators. And this is a technology called IoT or the Internet of Things where all of these features and all of these capabilities and more come in these type of devices. But I want you to answer one more question for me. Can these devices make you more vulnerable to cybersecurity attacks? That's what we're gonna be discussing today in the struggle security video where we are normalizing struggling in cybersecurity and we're gonna be talking about IoT's effect on cybersecurity and what you can do in order to prevent some of these attacks, some of these vulnerabilities from affecting you. Let's have the discussion. Today, we're gonna to be talking about IoT or the internet of things. As a number of connected devices in our homes and workplaces continue to grow, it's important to understand the unique security challenges that IoT or the internet of things brings to you and your organizations and how you can protect yourself from these potential threats and these harms. But the question is, what is IoT? Let's kind of take a little bit of a step back. IoT refers to the physical network or the network of physical devices that are connected to the internet typically. These things are connected to the internet where things, very simple things, like things like a, a coffee mug or a, a smart refrigerator or a thermostat, these things might have IP addresses and are connected and routed to the internet. In a recent survey, the number of IoT devices in use uh, worldwide is projected to reach over 75 billion in 2025. That's an, an astronomical number in comparison to where we have come. Where in many times, devices are just connected to its local network, that's how it talks, but all of these devices, these IoT devices, billions of devices connected to the internet is something that we need to take account of. While IoT has the potential to bring many benefits, such as some things I was talking about before, where you might be able to know when your eggs are gonna be expired, or even just sending data back and forth between yourself and original manufacturers to understand information about your devices, these things aren't really designed with security in mind. Rather that security, uh, just the basics of things, things like encryption. A lot of times these IoT devices do not have encrypted communication mechanisms or things like passwords. A lot of times they do have hard coded passwords or passwords that you cannot change and even patching. For those who have Windows PCs, you know that Windows PCs uh, with Microsoft, they have Patch Tuesdays where they're sending out patches to all these security vulnerabilities and functionality vulnerabilities. These things are not really part of the IoT um, management ecosystem where you're not getting patches from the original manufacturers. In many cases, these things go unpatched for years and years and years as they're in function. Like I mentioned, this can leave devices and systems and networks very vulnerable to cybersecurity attacks. Where one example in 2016, a botnet known as the Mirai was able to control hundreds of thousands of insecure IoT devices and launch a massive denial of service or distributed denial of service attack on hospital systems. And as devices continue to be integrated into critical infrastructure, such as healthcare and transportation, the potential consequences kind of grow and, and, and just amass to the point where it can go from, hey, you might be able to hack your smart refrigerator to hacking the generator at the local electrical utility organization. This thing can scale crazy. It's even come to the point where there are commercial and commodity devices that individuals are starting to produce and make. There are several commercial devices released that make hacking and affecting IoT devices extremely easy. And one of these devices is called Flipper Zero. I actually have one right here. Let me show you. Flipper Zero, right? This is one of the, the devices that a lot of people are using in order to do different types of security assessments and it's handheld, very easy to download different exploits and be able to affect not only IoT devices, but all types of devices. But let me show you a couple of examples. I'm gonna go to a couple of examples here of it hacking car key fobs, jamming McDonald's display screens, gas station system hacking, and even turning on and off the lights of systems. And hopefully that those examples have kind of brought your mind even more to an awareness of what individuals can do these, these days. But I don't wanna only leave you with the bad news, the bad, the bad information, but I wanna give you a couple of examples of what you, you can do. So say for instance, you're buying that smart refrigerator or that smart thermometer, right? Do what you do when you're buying anything else. What do you do? You typically look at reviews online. 
Now you can look for these re reviews, but even put maybe in the search engine things about security or security um, vulnerabilities of these different devices. And a lot of times the customers like yourself will be able to tell you if they've had issues with this. Security researchers published a lot of this information all on online. So before you invest in a smart device or a smart device, home device for your home, I would say, look at the reviews. That's one very critical advice that I would give you before you choose to buy anything. Another thing, if you're looking at integrating IoT devices into your organization, one thing that you can do is that utilizing network segmentation. This is a concept that we use in cybersecurity, specifically network security, where there are segments of devices in different places within a network where there is restricted access of certain networks or certain sub networks to other sub networks in order to protect the traffic and protect devices from multiple things. So say for instance, in your network, you have an IoT segment or IoT sub network where you're putting all of your IoT devices, your smart thermostats, your smart cameras, all of those type of devices. Um, and that would have a direct connection to the internet. But that IoT sub network would not be able to connect to things like your email servers or your data servers or your authentication servers. So you can do segmentation where if these IoT devices are hacked, they won't be able, the bad guys won't be able to jump into some of the more sensitive information and the sensitive data within your organization. So that's one thing is that network segmentation can be very valuable in that case. So one, looking up the reviews, if you're talking about bringing IoT devices into your homes, and two, if it's for your organization, utilizing a network security concept um, called network segmentation, putting them into their own type of segments within your network to protect them, protect your sensitive information and your sensitive devices from those things. With government organizations, they are very early in their adoption of regulations and standards for IoT devices. I know NIST has come up with several different publications, and this stands for the National Institute of Standards and Technology. They release many different cybersecurity standards and um, um, guidances for defending against certain devices, things like IoT, and they've released several different publications recently, like the NISTR 8259 series, the SP800-213 series, and also the Consumer IoT Products publication. I'll post all of those in the, in the description section for your viewing, but leaning on those government organizations in order to assist with the way that you implement IoT devices within your um, organizations is very important as well. So I do want to leave you with this, is that IoT as devices are becoming more and more connected, in the world, as devices are coming more and more connected together, I don't think that this is something to be alarmed about, but I do think it is something that you need to pay attention to. Don't just take anything and throw it into your home network, things that talk to very sensitive things within your home. Your home computers might contain passwords and credentials and sensitive information about your family. So you don't wanna introduce something that might be vulnerable, that might have security vulnerabilities into your home network and also with your organizations. Organizations are, are increasingly connecting things to the internet. So taking your prudence or being more prudent about putting these IoT devices within your enterprise organizations is very important as well, because you could be exposing it to critical infrastructure like healthcare systems or electrical or industrial type of devices. Hopefully this has been valuable to you. And again, this is Struggle Security, where we are normalizing struggling in cybersecurity. Let's talk more.